hi everyone and welcome to this escape workshop with Cooking with Josephine. I'm Josephine and I have been given a whole bunch of these incredible elephant garlic scapes to cook with today. I'm just going to get some in front of you. So what are these? So when you grow a hard neck garlic you will find that you either, if you're growing elephant garlic, you'll have these beautiful long straight spears about this time of year growing out the top of your garlic plants. If you're growing another type of hard neck garlic um, that you might have got from a garden centre or maybe you've ordered from the garlic farm, you'll find that you'll have these curly, more, oh, what would you call them? <laughs> curly spears that are growing. And at this time of year, what you need to do is break off the stem, break off these from your garlic plants, and that will mean that the energy that the plant is using to put into these, which is to grow a flower, will go back into the bulb and you'll get nice big bulbs. So maybe if you've been struggling with your garlic growing, that could be one of the reasons that you haven't been getting your maximum size bulbs. Now at the garlic farm we grow loads of elephant garlic, so at this time of year we are harvesting masses of these. And in times gone by, over in America, when they started growing elephant garlic and it became very popular, they didn't realise that these were actually edible, so there was loads and loads of waste. These just being chopped down at this time of year and left on the ground, which is, you're going to find out, an absolute travesty because they are really delicious. And to think that they were ever going to be wasted is a real shame. So we're doing some super simple stuff today and I hope that eventually you can order some of these online at the garlic farm, um, thegarlicfarm.com and they'll send you out a bunch and then you can re-watch this video that we're going to be posting uh, at, on the garlic farm website and you can get cooking some of this stuff yourselves. And maybe when you do, you send us some pictures, let us know what kind of creations you got into. So we're going to start with getting a soup on the go. Um, the escapes are really... They're an excellent addition to any recipe and the thing to do is a bit like an asparagus, you want to feel the point where they're a little bit ready to snap. Now this part, you could chuck that in the soup as well and I don't think you'll really notice but it can be a bit stringy. What I like to do with that bit is to just set it aside and then if I'm making anything, a stew, a, a veggie stock, a meat stock even, just throw that in and that will um, give it a bit of extra flavour. So as with asparagus, we're snapping off that little end that can be a bit tough. Same with your um, regular garlic ones, they also have a similar breaking point, or oh, some of them, this one not, I've probably broken it off already. Uh, and we're left with the elephant garlic scape. Now, at the moment, these are pretty soft and lovely at the top and if we open them up, you can see this beautiful, absolutely beautiful flower that would eventually, if left in the ground, would turn into a beautiful purple allium. And sometimes at the farm we leave a field like that and it is gorgeous. It's like something from outer space. Now, when you're cooking, do you need to do that to every one? Um, the answer is no, not at this time of year, but it sort of depends, uh, not when they're this fresh, but it sort of depends what you're cooking them with. So what I've done is... I like to, for a soup, for this soup we're going to do for example, I like to actually take the tops off and then save the tops and then chuck them in a roasting dish with some olive oil and I've got a roasted garlic scape there which we're going to use to dress our scape soup at the end. Now we're also going to use some of these other roasted scapes in our garlic egg mayo sandwich. I know it doesn't sound very glamorous or very exciting but I'm telling you I have it under good instruction that it's an excellent, excellent combination and I, I know it, I've tried it myself. And I'm, I'm trying to keep things really simple so that you can do this at home when you get hold of your skates. So we're going to just chop up a handful, we don't need many, they've got a lot of flavour and um, you want to get the best out of them. So we're going to take, what have we got here, one, two, three, four, five, six skates and we're going to break the ends off, I'm going to chop the ends off actually, and set those aside. And then I'm just going to very roughly chop these into inch long, inch long stems. Oh, nice to see everyone joining by the way, I recognise some names. Um, and I'm going to save, as I, as I said, I'm going to save the ends, maybe for artistic reasons you want to save some quite long ones, or just keep them short and then we're going to decorate the soup at the end. And I, I have to admit, I have cheated a little bit because, um, you know, I haven't done a lot of cookery shows. So I have prepped some of my stuff in advance. 
Um, the soup is very, very simple. It's a basic. We're going to put a bit of oil on in the pan, maybe a bit of butter if you want to, or if you want to keep it vegan and keep it with just oil. And I'm going to start off with um, one onion and, and a carrot. It, it's kind of, if you have a bit of celery, you could add that in there as well. And we're just going to leave that for a little bit to get heated up and going. Um, so the, the other thing to go in this soup is going to be some lovely new potatoes. Maybe you've got some growing at home. Uh, if so, go, go digging. It's that time of year. And we're going to chuck those in. We're actually just going to chuck them, because they're new potatoes, they're going to cook quite quickly. Once we've got the soup on the go, um, with the stock and everything, we're going to put the potatoes in straight away. So the quantities for these recipes I have got here, and I will tell you, um, it's very much... so. 200 grams of potatoes will be enough. This is going to be enough soup for about two to three portions. And uh, 200 grams of potatoes will be absolutely fine. And you can use any potatoes. I'm using new potatoes because that's what we have and that's what's seasonal. But rest assured, you could chuck anything in. An escape soup. I mean, you could do it just with onions and escapes. It would be quite intense. So I've tried to sort of... And also, you're probably... not. You don't want to use all of your escapes in your soup. We want to save them for the other things that we're going to be doing. So whilst our soup is on the go, we're going to multitask a little bit, my favourite thing to do, uh, and we're going to make a really straightforward escape pesto. So I'm going to show you now, I mean, you can eat these raw. They've got, it's not like eating a raw garlic clove, but they have got some fire. So when making your pesto, be a little bit aware of that. Um, you could, because you might find that you're just you're blowing everyone's heads off, and that's not really what we want to do when we serve up a nice summery pesto. But at the same time, it will really liven up any pasta dish, or um, maybe you could chuck it on some bread and make a sort of pesto pesto garlic bread. Um, but yeah, just be aware when you're making this pesto that however much scapes go in there. It's going to give you some fire. So what I've done is also so that you can keep your skates and do as many different recipes as possible. What I've done is I've found in the garden we've got lots of wonderful stuff growing at the moment, and I really like using radish tops, and they're a great filler, and they're very cheap, and they're absolutely delicious when they're still quite young. So what I've done here is on the recipe, I've sort of put it down to more like 100 grams of skates and a handful of radish tops. So I'm popping those in there as well. Now the rest of the rest of the skate, oh, I'll just check on our soup, which I can hear sizzling away here. Give that a bit of a stir. Great. Now, the rest of the skate pesto is really up to you. And I have, for once, indulged in some pine nuts the most expensive nut on the planet, I think. Uh, but it works really, really well, this pesto, with hazelnuts. Um, cashew nuts would go very creamy, but they would also work. Sunflower seeds, I often make my pesto with sunflower seeds these days because it's so much cheaper. But pine nuts are a real luxury. We all know that when you do make the effort and you do indulge in some pine nuts, you really, really reap the rewards at the end because the flavor is just quite special, isn't it? So um, I'm going to add some olive oil. Again, the actual recipe quantities for this are on the website. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not a great fan of following recipes, so I'm trying to get better. Uh, so the olive oil's gone in there, and then we're going to do half a lemon juice. And with pesto, like, you just you just got to keep trying it, haven't you? You put it in. Every time I make it, it could be a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that. Just keep tasting. Definitely taste it before you put it on the table and taste it before you run it through your dinner in whatever way you're going to. Um, I'm just going to give the soup a little stir. That's coming on nicely. And in a moment, when those uh, carrots and onions have got really translucent, I'm going to add in the chopped scapes that we've got. So we've got um, our pine nuts. We've got some radish tops. We've got the, pest, uh, the, the scapes. And now parmesan. Again, if you're vegan, you do not have to worry about the parmesan. 
um, your pesto will still be delicious, but we're doing it classic today, and I thought it would be nice to include a nice healthy amount of parmesan in there. But as I'm sure many of you find, it's not an absolute essential to a really, really great pesto, especially if you're trying to avoid dairy products. Um, the amount of, of parmesan is up to you, how indulgent you want to be, and also maybe depending on what you're using your pesto for, if you're using it for um, a lovely pasta or a rice pesto salad, you probably want to be quite generous with the amount of parmesan that you use, um, so you've got that kind of cheesiness to your recipe. And then we're just going to add some salt and pepper, and I'm going to do so these little little teaspoons, I could actually do quite a lot, sort of a flat wooden teaspoon of salt. Pesto, in my opinion, needs to be salty. But do remember, like I said at the beginning, these are quite fiery. You don't want to blow everyone away. Um, a nice bit of, about the same, half the amount, actually, half a teaspoon of pepper. And we're going to give it a blitz in the Nutribullet. Now, my Nutribullet is really, really loud, so I hope you will... Um, won't mind that what I have actually done, and I'm also going to explain a fermented part of this recipe now. I'm not going to blitz this in front of you because it will blast you away. Let's check on our soup. That's great. Um, so at this stage, I here's one I made earlier. Do forgive me. I made this yesterday. And what you can do with this, um, I decided I wanted to make it a fermented dish. Um, we're going to be doing another fermented dish on, uh, in a moment. But what I did with this is I added two tablespoons of whey. We talked about whey last time I did a video. Whey is the byproduct of making cheese or straining yogurt. And if you're making labne, oh wow, that smells amazing. Yeah, definitely a great recipe this with the skates. So, so good. So I've put two tablespoons of whey through that and I'm leaving it for two days to ferment. And then I'm, gonna, I'm hoping that it's going to have this extra fermented flavour on top of the incredible, um, quite punchy scape um, vibe. So if you want to do that, then um, I would recommend finding yourself some whey. Sometimes when you buy a big pot of yoghurt, there is some whey on the top that you could just take off. Or make some, or how else, I mean, make some cheese, make some labne. Um, alternatively, you can ferment without whey, just using salt. Um, extra salt and leave it to ferment for a few days. So good luck with that. I'd like to see hear how you get on, but obviously the pesto is also edible just as it is straight away. Um, and yeah, use it however you please. It would be really, really good um, in chicken, or you could mix it uh, in chicken like a very, very classy chicken kia. Um, or, as I said, through pasta, stuff like that. Put it on a jagged potato, anything. So much you can do with that. So we're going to go back to our soup, which is, we've got that going nicely. I just need to chop some more of the skates because they ended up going in my, in my pesto. So, again, I'm doing, one, two, what did I say? About six or seven skates. I'm saving the ends. We wouldn't want to waste, if you're just joining, we don't want to waste the beautiful flowery head in a soup that we're going to blitz. We're saving those to decorate the top of the soup in a moment. So once I've sautéed my carrots and onions, I'm adding my scapes, and I'm going to sauté them for a little bit as well. And as soon as you add them, just like with regular, when you add regular garlic, something different is happening in the kitchen. And I, when I made this yesterday, um, another one I made in advance. I had my housemates coming down and saying, what is that smell? It smells incredible. Just as soon as you've added the scapes, they are just fantastic. And, you know, at the moment when normally a lot of our customers would be buying these scapes and serving them in restaurants, they are really popular now. But with, what, with everything that's going on, not a lot of restaurants selling scapes. We've got loads for you. So do get in touch with us at The Garlic Farm and help us to get through our huge quantity of skates and like they're so enjoyable to cook with. Um, we're going to see by the end of this video. So I'm sautéing the skates a little bit more and whilst that's happening, I'm going to pop a lid on, just let them steam a little bit. And whilst that's happening, I'm going to move on 
to probably my favourite part of, of this video, which is to talk about lacto-fermented scapes. Don't they look gorgeous? They're going to look amazing once I've added a salt brine. So this is a different ferment to the one I usually do. Um, I, I really enjoy salt brines. They're just, it, it's, it's a sort of different process. A li not more faffy necessarily. Uh, what I've done with this is I've kept the tops, I've, I've stripped them all, and because I think they look gorgeous in the jar. And we're going to do two types of salt brine. One with little scapes that I've cut, cut up into tiny little pieces, and one where I've kept them straight. If you don't have a tall jar like this, just cut them to the size that you have. Um, doesn't really matter. And however, whatever quantity you have, it doesn't matter either. Now you could add other stuff to this salt brine. You could put some carrots, whole um, battens of carrots in there. Any real crunchy vegetable. Um, you could put radishes in there, actually. I've, I've got some from the garden. We're going to decorate um, some roasted scapes with some shaved radishes at the end. But, um, you know, you, if you don't want to use all your scapes in an active ferment, that's completely understandable. Just use a few and add it in. Or maybe you watch my video on the kimchi kraut, you could add some chopped scapes to that and they would work really, really well. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how simple it is to do a to do a lacto-fermented recipe. And so the thing is, we're going to put our bowl on the scales. We, what we need, we need to find the, the weight of the scapes and the water, but not the jar. So in, for that reason, we're using filtered water and we're going to cover the scapes with the water like so. We're going to then pour all of that into this bowl. To weigh it. So it's coming up at just under two kilos, just under two kilos. I'm just going to give this a stir. I said I was going to be multitasking and I am. Um, with the soup at this stage, we've got the skates are nicely um, sautéed. I'm now going to add the stock. So this is a litre of veggie stock. If you if you have it, you could use chicken stock, it would also be delicious, but we're keeping it vegetarian and vegan. And I'm also, at this stage, going to add my potatoes. And then we're going to pop the lid on. I'm not going to worry about that for a while. So that is that. Super simple. We'll season it and we'll jazz it up later, but how easy is that? Um, a question has come through. My garlic hasn't grown scapes yet. So only if you are growing hard neck garlic. Now most of the garlic that you buy in the shops, guys, will be soft neck garlic. If you want hard neck garlic, um, which is incredible to grow, partly because you get the scape, which is an extra product, but also it, it, it's a really, really different flavour and often has different, um, uh, different harvesting and, and planting times. So it's great because you can, uh, you can have your garlic coming through, through a longer period of the season. So Worcester Wool 14, Check what garlic you were growing, it might not grow scapes. Soft neck garlic, or for example, our solar white garlic is a soft neck garlic, it won't grow scapes. Hope that answers your question. Now, with the fermenting of the garlic um, in the water, what we need is we need between a 3 and 5% salt brine. So that means we need, uh, we need to work out what I'm going to do 4%. What 4% of two, um, 2 kilos is. I have worked it out already because I, you know, my math isn't fantastic. So we, it's, an 80, it's 80 grams of salt. Now it seems like an awful lot, um, but it's a salt brine. It is more than, a, than the other sort of ferments that I do, the sort of the salt rub. So the reason we do it in this bowl is so that we can make sure that we really, that, that salt really mixes in. And then we're going to pop the scapes back in the jar. See, it's so easy to do this um, fermented scape jobby, she says. And put that back in the jar. I'm just going to grab a 
handy little funnel, so I don't make a real mess here. And we're going to pour the salt brine over the top. I'm going to chuck in at this point a few extra flavours. Um, lovely, I love uh, pink peppercorns. They just look really nice in there. And you could add anything else that you want. Um, I've got some coriander seeds, I'm going to pop them in too. Uh, you could put fennel seeds, anything that you fancy really. Um, and I'm going to pour this back in to the jar. And that really is all that you need to do. Oh, another question. I'll answer your question when I finish this. But do make sure, see what's happened here, is that all the salt goes, goes in. And that's that. You then need to make sure that your garlic is submerged under the liquid. And to do that, I don't have a particularly fancy method for this, except I take a jar um, that's smaller than the jar I'm fermenting in, and I push it down. You could use a vegetable to do this. I sometimes use half an onion. Anything that's going to keep your garlic submerged, your scapes submerged in their liquid. And there we have it. They, I'm going to give them a shake up. I'm going to leave those for up to two weeks, the ferment, but I'm going to check on them. I'm going to check on them every so, every few days um, because, you know, the, the rate of fermentation can change, especially with the weather being so warm. Um, you've, Worcester Woo is from the garlic farm. Well, it, it, might, it might be that they, uh, I don't know when you planted them, but it might be that they haven't come up yet. Um, it might be that you haven't got hard neck garlic. I need, if we know what garlic you've got, we can, we can let you know. Um, uh, what, 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 when to expect your scapes to be coming. So we've done our lacto-fermented scapes. So this, you would do the same process with these little guys, but you could also do a pickle, and pickled scapes are lovely. And the way to do that would be to heat up, um, so I'll put this, this recipe on the website as well, you would heat up some cider vinegar, some sugar, so a little bit of water, and get that nice and hot, and then you pour that mixture with any other flavorings that you want. Into, onto your scapes. And I just love this as a way of preserving the scapes so that these scapes, when all, all the other scapes have gone and they're just a dream, we will have our fermented scapes and they are just delicious. And any other vegetables that you put in there as well, you'll notice um, it's a really, really great way to eat your veg. And as we know, or we are learning, uh, fermented foods are really, really good for us. In fact, they are better for us in many ways. They will bring more nutrients, many different nutrients and different bacteria to our guts that are desperate for that in our current environment where lots of things are causing our guts to really struggle with processed foods, antibiotics. A lot of the diets that we're on now don't, um, don't have a, enough of a variety of bacteria that we need. So at this time, more than ever, I would urge you to eat as much fermented food as possible. And that is one way of doing it. So we've got our pesto. Maybe you're going to do lacto fermented. Um, you're going to do the fermented pesto with some whey. Uh, we've got lacto fermented scapes, perhaps some pickled scapes. Um, our soup is on the go. And finally, I think I just want to say there's. I mean, there's many things you could do with scapes. Uh, I'm going to use a few of these, for example, just to. A little bowl with some roasted scapes, a drizzle of uh, a drizzle of balsamic, maybe reduced balsamic would be good, or one of those balsamic balsamic syrups, and a few shavings of radish, a squeeze of lemon juice, and maybe just to decorate a few chives from the garden. And it's a lovely, lovely salad to offer um, as a side dish to, um, to whatever else you've got going on. Instead of radish, you could do shaved parmesan, uh, roasted scapes. They, they come out very much like asparagus when they're roasted. So anything that you would do with asparagus, I recommend doing with scapes. Um, so the soup is on its way. And the final thing I wanted to do is, I know, you're going to wonder why you're watching me show you how to make an egg mayo sandwich. I'm not really, you know, saying that you need to learn how to do this, but it is a really, really great combo. And 
I used obviously the garlic farm mayonnaise because the roasted scapes are not super garlicky so I wasn't afraid to, so I'm just putting some of this really yummy egg mayo with garlic farm mayonnaise, loads of it in between two pieces of buttered brown bread and then I'm going to lay these little beauties on top and to me that is a sensational picnic with uh, well a picnic or a supper for this evening Friday night or it'll probably be when you get your skates lockdown supper nice and light or lockdown picnic lunch with the kids in the garden some pesto which you could if you added some yogurt to the pesto or if you added some tahini it becomes more of a dip and if you want to make it even more um, if you wanted to make it even more uh, of, a, of a probiotic, I will often add my milk kefir to my pestos. And then you've just got this easy probiotic deliciousness going on. So there we go. That's, that's my lunch ready for when I go off and do my stuff later. Um, really, really cramming. I don't think there's enough scapes in there. Really cramming the scapes. And for roasting the scapes, I did it in advance. Um, but 180 degrees, chop them up, chuck them in a pan, drizzle them with olive oil, some salt and pepper, and 15 minutes. 15 minutes at 180 degrees is absolutely perfect. Now, the soup is still on its way. I've sped through all of this, so I won't, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. I'm going to explain the rest of the soup, which I, in a, what I've done in advance is over here. Let's heat that back up. It's a delicious, earthy, super simple recipe. The scapes just give it this really nice, uh, wholesome flavour. And I am going to serve that in a bowl with, as I said, a nice roasted scape to garnish. But also, I really recommend doing it with a dollop of Greek yogurt in the centre. Some of the roasted scapes that we've kept the heads on. Imagine what a mouthful that's going to be. Absolutely delicious. And can we get some scapes in Bristol please, Joe? Yes we can. There's the order. We'll put it through. So, I've got this. I'm going to just, I've got some chopped herbs. I'm going to sprinkle over the top. Maybe a few drops of olive oil. Can you see this, my friends? It's hard to see, I, I appreciate that. Woo! We got like, ta-da! It looks so great, it's so seasonal, it's so easy. And I mean, there's a million other things you could do with these scapes. You could, um, but someone's at Metal Artisan made a mushroom and scape pie, absolutely. Um, scapes are really, really, um, great in quiches and they look fantastic so cook your quiche however you like chop the scapes into it but also save some of these beautiful heads and then lay them on the top and it just looks fantastic I think oh the oh, yeah was there anything else to say about scapes I don't think so um, like I say don't waste the ends we, we talked about this at the beginning if you've just joined they're like an asparagus you break them off at breaking point and you're going to save that and you're going to just chuck it into whatever of your, um, with other soups or anything that you want to add a little bit of flavour. Um, Carcassonne white and soda white, I think Worcester Woo, that those are soft necks and that'll be why, if you missed at the beginning, only hard neck garlic grow the scape. And if you're growing garlic at home, please go out and cut them off right now so that all of that energy goes down into the bulb. And... I think that's all I've got to say.